They call him Magic, a five-time NBA champion and 12-time All-Star. He's regarded as the most skilled point guard of all time. He was a show in himself, a founding piece of the Showtime Lakers of the 1980s, and one of the first great faces of the league. But what if I told you that's only a small part of what Irvin Johnson is? Since he has built one of the biggest and most successful investment conglomerates in the whole country. Would you like to know how Magic built his incredible business empire? Follow me, because it's time to talk money. Years before his surprisingly early retirement in 1991, and a very short return to the game in 1996, Magic had started to plan for his future back in 1987. He founded an investment group called Magic Johnson Enterprises and immediately began to ask for advice from those who knew best. I cold called 20 CEOs and asked them to lunch. I knew from basketball that preparation was key. I'm focused and I'm driven and I'm one of the most disciplined people you'll ever meet. So when I was picking their brains to start a business, I discovered self-evaluation is key. Magic Johnson. Johnson, who likes to be addressed as Irvin in the business world, started to build his wealth by becoming aware of the economic potential the urban American market had. Magic had done his research and came across a number that stuck with him. It turned out African Americans spend a trillion dollars a year. So he used that to convince other CEOs that the money was worth the try of giving overlooked communities quality entertainment services. That's how he started with his first business enterprise, Magic Johnson Theaters, after closing on a partnership deal with Sony Pictures. The project was a total triumph and quickly began to lead the charts as the most concurred establishments in the country. Following that first attempt, Magic then shifted his attention to coffee giants Starbucks, and he became the first person to ever reach a franchise agreement with the company in 1998. Again, making use of that vision he had to involve economically disadvantaged neighborhoods into the mix. I had to take scones out of my Starbucks and replace them with pumpkin pies and peach cobblers, and I got rid of Andre Bocelli from the playlist, and in my Starbucks, you hear earth, wind, and fire. Why? Because you have to know your customer, and you have to over-deliver to your customer. My customers didn't want classical music and scones. Magic Johnson. The success was unequivocal. He owned a total of 125 stores in many different towns, until he sold 50% of his share for a sum of around $50 million after exceeding the expectations he and his partners had. Another investment he made was with his team, the Los Angeles Lakers. He bought a 4.5% stake in 1995 for $10 million, when the players' salaries and revenues weren't even close to what they are today. Fifteen years later, in 2010, the Lakers were worth almost $607 million, and his stake had risen to the $50 million mark. So, he sold it, just days before selling his Starbucks stake, earning close to $100 million in a couple of days. That move definitely has magic written all over it. <laughs> but that would only be his first big sports team investment. Just wait and see. When I think about basketball for me, it was a tremendous platform for me to start my brand, to understand winning, and to be a competitor. Magic Johnson. Most recently, his wealth has been founded by endorsements, investments, and media ventures. That left his former NBA salary as only a very little part of his fortune. That's how great he's been doing with his businesses. However, his competitive fire and determination came way earlier when he was only a child on one cold Saturday afternoon. Magic was helping his dad collect trash off the frozen streets of Lansing, Michigan. Magic picked some of it off the ground and went back to the truck to go home. He was cold, but he had left half of the item there laying on the ground. So just before the door would close, his dad grabbed him and sent him back to pick up the rest. There's trash stuck in the ice, son. If you do your life halfway, that's how you'll practice basketball. That's how you'll do your homework. You'll always be a person who doesn't finish the job. Irvin Johnson Sr. That episode molded him into a perfectionist from an early age, not just in basketball, but in life and in business as well. Speaking about his investments nowadays, Magic stands his brand on three pillars to help grow its wealth. One is strategic partnerships and ownerships in different established institutions and sports teams. The most important of those came in 2012, when he became the co-owner of the Los Angeles Dodgers, along with several partners, who bought the franchise for $2 billion, the highest price paid for a professional team back then. 
but he bought the Dodgers with a vision. He already knew the value of the team was about to increase up to 38% in five years, and that the league had a $9 billion TV deal coming up as well. They said we were crazy, but what they didn't know was that a TV deal was coming up and the 300 acres of land the Dodgers own is worth $3 billion, so the land alone was worth more. Magic Johnson. That sounds like a confident man. Although, at the time the purchase was made, the Dodgers were struggling. Attendance numbers fell while the team was underperforming. We had to find out what was wrong. We changed the fan experience. We put money into the stadium, and now we're the number one in attendance. The secret sauce for me is to see what is wanted, what is missing, and deliver it. Magic Johnson. The value of his Dodgers stake, matched with his other stake at the Los Angeles Sparks of the WNBA, reaches a significant $65 million as of 2021. And he also co-owns another LA team, LAFC of the MLS. Johnson has so many other investments, like controlling interests in Equitrust, a financial services company with a $14 billion value, and is related to Aspire, an African-American television network. The other pillar is direct investment, owning stakes at different outlets and helping businesses to grow and flourish, like he did with the Marvel Experience, Walt Disney Imagineering, Uncharted Power Incorporations, a renewable energy company, and Mitu, a Latin-fueled media brand. The latter is marketing, providing a unique vision and understanding for companies through expertise, leadership, and insight, just as his earlier examples with theaters and Starbucks prove. Everything I do, I want to win. I want to win for me, for my partners, and for my community. But if I mess up, there are two things, learn and change. Magic Johnson. He's also explored a series of investing ventures worth hundreds of millions of dollars in ethnically diverse and populated areas in the U.S. with Canyon Capital Realty Advisors, a Century City investment fund that manages around $18 billion for investors such as pension funds and university endowments. Particularly, Magic Johnson Enterprises helped finance 30 real estate developments in 13 states, bringing both parts a sum of $2 billion in revenue. And Magic is also involved in investments such as an $8 billion joint venture to rebuild LaGuardia Airport. He's literally everywhere. Today, Magic Johnson Enterprises says its mission is all about encouraging community and economic empowerment. They do this by providing access to high-quality entertainment, products, and services that meet the demands of multicultural communities. Per the company's website, now his investment conglomerate value sits today at an estimated $1 billion thanks to its ability to find diverse investment opportunities in many areas. And it doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. Today, Magic Johnson reportedly has a net worth of $600 million and per year endorsements worth $10 million. When by the end of his basketball career, Magic had earned only $40 million. That's it, that's the tweet. Hats off to you, Magic. So these were the ways in which Magic Johnson built his amazing empire. He envisioned what his future would look like. Then he found advice from leaders in the field of entrepreneurship and molded the knowledge he got with some of his legendary magic to become one of the biggest businessmen in the country, always having urban communities and ethnically diverse areas as his main locations of interest. Did you know of magic's business success? What was your favorite investment on the list? Be sure to let us know.